so much, Ahmed, for the intro. <laughs> um, can you see my screen and can you hear me? Yes, fine? yes, all awesome. good. All right. So, uh, first off, let me start by saying a quick thank you to Michael and the Perceiving Systems team for having a for setting up this amazing tutorial and inviting me and also Meshkepade to also be involved. It's really so much time and work that goes into planning and doing such a such a tutorial, but it's always so worth it because you get, get to see all this work that we've been building up on all together. So great. I'm Noreen, everyone, uh, uh, from Meshkepade. And so Meshkepade is a tech startup based in Tübingen. And like Ahmed mentioned, we are a spin-off actually from the Perceiving Systems Department at Max Planck. So Meshkapade essentially is a startup built to explore, create, and also collaborate on all the amazing possibilities of the simple model. In fact, not just the simple model, but the whole family of the, the variants of the simple model and the related technologies that are built around this model. And we at Meshkapade are working towards extending the usage of these, these technologies to different industries. And we're doing this through primarily through our online body processing platform, which we call DigiDapo. So this platform is essentially where everyone can create their very own realistic digital avatars. So in a nutshell, DigiDapo is sort of like this one-stop shop where users can input complex data from many different sources, which can be ranging from high-end 3D scanning systems or even photos and videos from smartphones and LiDAR RGBD data. Uh, and they instantly, they can instantly receive an accurate 3D avatar, which they can, which can be easily imported into a vast array of commercial tools. These can be ranging from tools for um, apparel design or animation, and even for generating more AI training data. So essentially, DigiDoppel is the interface for the decoder ring idea uh, that, that Michael has sometimes mentioned often uh, for the simple model itself. So to show you guys some of the things available, DigiDoppel can, first of all, take, in, it take, it can take in any body measurements and it can create accurate body shape for the measurement change. And the same body can then be animated with a single click on the same platform. We can also process videos to create 3D avatars with accurate pose and facial expressions. So here we've actually used a modified version of Simplify X that you guys have just heard about. Uh, and as you can see, the body shape is also being fitted to some extent to get some of Obama's facial features here. And then we can also use 3D scans and motion capture data to create realistic avatars. So these features are also modified versions of uh, some of the earlier work that we worked on uh, at perceiving systems, including the Faust and the MUSH uh, technologies. So among these, the items you see here on the left are actually already live on digidouble.com. And the items on the right are available for processing on demand. So feel free to get in touch about any of these if, you're, if you need the, the processing power from, from Digidouble. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the features of the DigiDoppel platform. First of all, the output files that you get from DigiDoppel is in the simple model topology, and it provides the option of choosing from multiple output file formats, which are the standards for animation needs. And these include the OBJ, FBX, and PC2. Of course, you can also get the, the actual simple model parameters. They, they, they come as a JSON file as metadata anyways. Secondly, so you can also choose from different resolutions. You can, of course, get this default simple model uh, resolution, which is around 7,000 vertices or 13,000 polygons. We also have a medium resolution, what we call a medium resolution, which is 27,000 vertices, and a high resolution, which is 110,000 vertices. Uh, these are essentially just subdivisions of, on top of the simple topology. So, so you can still go back to the base topology every time. Then, if you have a 3D scan, often the 3D scan will also come with a really nice high resolution texture. And uh, you can essentially upload this, the scan together with the texture uh, on the DigiDoppel platform, and it will automatically transfer the texture to the simple model output 
the sim simple topology output that you get from Digidoppel. So essentially it creates a texture that can be applied to any of the Digidoppel, any other Digidoppel outputs or any other outputs you have from the simple model. In addition to that, we are also rolling out our own library of high quality textures. So these include many clothing type options uh, along with uh, realistic normal deformations as you can see in this super fast uh, preview. And this is essentially to simulate cloth wrinkles as well. These textures have been essentially modularly designed so that you can keep using them in the, to combining them in different uh, combinations to create thousands and thousands of colors and clothing type options. In addition to the cloth variations, we also have skin variations. Sorry, yeah. So, so essentially, we have, uh, we have created a library of variation of skin tone, as well as with some hair, the hair variation. Of course, this is not real hair because it's still just texture map, but that's also coming soon. Then besides that, actually, here is a quick preview of just showing what it looks like to have the different pieces composited together in a proper 3D environment with correct, like good lighting. Now, as everyone using the simple model, of course, already also knows that we can directly infer the joints, or uh, as we've also been talking about in the, uh, in the chat, we can infer the joints from the simple model. And so even if the output mesh is just a 3D registration, which means the body parameters of the output may not be completely lying within the simple shape space, still, the simple parameterization allows us to infer these, the skeleton rig from this mesh. So the output of Digidoppel will always be consistent with the simple model. And then finally, the last two are actually the features which the research community may not, well, the last one probably, the research community is not probably going to agree with, but these are features that were the most highly requested by industry users. First is body measurements. So we can infer body measurements directly from the simple model shape space. So this is, has been, there's a research for this as well, um, research, research publications for this as well. But in addition to this, we have also rolled out measurements computed directly on the 3D mesh of the output of, uh, from Digidoppel. And this can capture essentially the variation in measurements during different poses. And then the second most highly requested feature is symmetrization. So Digidoppel offers users the option to symmetrize the body mesh as well as the body pose. So of course, humans are not symmetric and training the model parameters directly from real human data, it, that means that the model will not be symmetric. But the issue is that the current industry st standard applications for animation or cloth simulation, and especially for any industry that has a physical product, they all need to have a symmetric body for, for being able to generalize for their products for wider use. So we, we've also released this for that reason. Now let's talk about some of the upcoming features. We are developing a library of animations. Users will be able to not only select a new motion for their own avatars, but we will also enable automatic motion transfer from any uploaded simple rig to a new output body that the user has created on Digidoppel. Next is the self-intersection problem because this all, were, all was also discussed a bit in the earlier session. This causes huge problems, especially for cloth simulation programs when users are trying to drape clothing on the, on the body. So areas of the area around the thighs is especially prone to causing self-intersection issues. So on the right from this view, it doesn't really seem like there's much of an intersection issue going on in this region. But let me show you a different view, a cross-section view from the top down for this same mesh. And here, you can see that the cloth simulation is getting tangled up in the crotch area. And in this next image, you can also see the image, this sort of highlights the specific vertices that are getting sort of uh, messed up because of the self-intersection and um, causing, causing the problem with this cloth simulation. So this is, this is a, high, a high priority priority item on our roadmap to address. And then finally, of course, there's also the support for advanced sensor types, including RGBD, smartphone-based LiDAR, as well as support for integration with XR devices. 
So we're working on that and hopefully coming up with some solutions soon. So now, how do you use Digitopo? The first is the easy web-based access through the Digitopo website. You can just go to digitopo.com. It provides a simple drag and drop interface that's ideal for beginners or uh, low volume users. The second is the API. Users can develop their own applications around the API so such that their app essentially will be connected directly to our cloud servers in the background and uh, their app can have, they can create a wrapper around this uh, for their own app. And then finally, of course, users who want to process their data on site or they want to use their own infrastructure, we are also, we have just rolled out our SDK. This is in private beta. If you're interested in finding out more about this, just let us know. So now the versatility of the simple model formulation essentially allows us to easily use it in so many different optimization problems as you've seen in the earlier sessions. So what we're doing, as I mentioned earlier, is essentially making it possible for everyone, even non-researchers to easily run these methods and get a uniform output through the Digitable platform. So essentially it's opening up the applicability of the simple model and the applications and the technologies that are built around simple model to many different application areas, which are ranging from apparel design, apparel sizing, body shape capture, motion tracking. And then there's a vast area of applications within the entertainment space. I've just composited it into one section here. So to give you guys a short preview of the applications, I'll show you how designers in the apparel space specifically are using this. So Browseware, for example, is one of the leading cloud simulation programs. The software is used across the fashion industry to design and visualize new clothing patterns. So they've now integrated 3D animated avatars of different sizes, ages, and genders from the Digitopel platform. And they've put them directly into the browser software so that designers can preview their clothing directly on different sized bodies. So the important, another important aspect from, that comes from this is the realistic deformations that designers get from the simple model. The, the, the soft tissue deformation due to poses is, is very valuable because it essentially allows them to clearly visualize the real areas of stretch and compression in the cloth when the person actually moves around. For example, you'll see it stretches in this section when he raises his arms. So now quickly, what is what else is in development at Meshkapet? The earlier section was more about the soon to be coming items, but here is sort of a list that is based on the feedback from all of the partners in the industry that we've been working with. We've sort of started compiling a road, roadmap of features that are highly requested and we want to start focusing on those as well pretty soon. So first is the texture. This is a simple one. The UVs of the simple model are a little too simplistic, but, um, but that's not the main problem. They're, they're also unsymmetrized. That's, symmetry is the constant question for most industry users. And in some areas, actually, in the simple UVs, the projection is from opposite side of the normal than in other, other regions. So there, there are some you know, simple fixes that to the UVs that we will be rolling out and we'll be also making it available for the research side of, uh, of the simple model, uh, the, asp uh, the assets that are available for the simple model along with our textures library. So next for the skeleton rig, the animation industry has certain expectations. So, so that they want more skeleton, more joints in certain places or they want the, the joints to be more anatomically located, for example, in the shoulders and the hip, hip region. They want more joints in the spine for sure. And there's also, of course, the symmetrization question again for the joints, which are also not symmetric in the models. Then there's also this inconsistency with how the joints are oriented. It's not that it's inconsistent in the model itself, but there's the in inconsistency between what people specifically in the gaming skeleton rig, ex people expect in a gaming skeleton rig compared to what the simple model has. But this is something just because we, when we developed the model, we didn't know and that's how it works for the animation industry. So these are things that we are working on adding on top of the rig so that it's much more easier for animators to just plug the model into their existing pipeline. They can still use it in all of these 
programs like Blender and Maya, but they have specific pipelines and things just need to be able to plug in into the pipeline. That's what we are working on making possible. And then last but not the least, the most interesting item is sort of a pipeline to re retrain new models more easily because we receive more, as we keep on receiving more attention from animators and game designers, specifically these, these, this space, the more complex poses and body shapes, shapes we keep encountering. So we have to be able to quickly and easily add more complex data and uh, to the training set of the models to keep on improving it. So that's, that's another thing. And next, actually now last but not the least, finally, if you have applications in mind that are not being covered by the DigiDouble platform uh, or, or the, all, all the items that I mentioned, then we've still got you covered. We offer direct licensing essentially of many different models, techniques, and training data sets. So first, of course, we have licensing for the body models. These include the simple model, the simple H, simple X, star, and even smile, the infant model. Mano, the hand model can be licensed separately and we're, we'll soon have the small, small the, the animal model for commercial use as well. We also have several body pose and shape estimation technologies, which cover most of the recent publications that you guys just heard about. about. And finally, if you want to use the training data from any of the technologies or the models, then you can also license those from Meshkapade, from the Meshkapade licensing page mentioned above. All right, that about covers it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Noreen, for this uh, exciting talk. Uh, it's quite inspiring to see like a technology being developed from academia and how it's making impact in industry. Uh, Michael, I think we don't have time for uh, questions. Do we have still have time or should we? We could give her one minute. Do we have one question? Uh, I can shoot that question. So uh, Noreen, you said like uh, you're in industry. So you, what, what do you think like are the open problems that academics need to tackle uh, for you to license that their solutions? So what do people ask you for? Symmetrization, man. Everything is all about why aren't the but models. That's probably symmetric. not what we're going to put. We're probably not yeah, going to write a CBPR paper on it, I think. It's, that's uh, perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. So what, no, no. what should what should academia be doing that that you know that's down the road a long way, maybe? So right now there are all of these newer tools. So having the I think the holy grail is still not achieved, right? The getting an accurate body shape and pose from images. This is this has this has been the holy grail for a while, and this is still the you know unsolved problem, and it's it's getting there. But I think that is the biggest mover right now, and it the industry like the the research is moving in the right direction towards getting there. But I don't know how we will solve it because single images just don't have enough information. Perhaps with more and more different training uh, estimation, you know, Let's improving. See. Yeah, it's a good challenge. <laughs> Let's see. It's a good exactly. challenge for us. Uh, okay, I think we should move on. Thanks, yeah. Noreen. Thank mm -hmm. you, Noreen. So, uh, moving on to our next.